Chapter 5, Mother Chatos. Not far from the green where the May Day revels were held stood the ancient parish church of Wally, a square tower surmounted with a flagstaff and banner, and shaking with the joyous peals of the ringers, a picturesque and beautiful structure it was, though full of architectural incongruities, and its grey walls and hoary buttresses, with the lancet-shaped windows of the choir, and the ramified tracery of the fine eastern window, could not fail to please any taste not quite so critical as to require absolute harm harmony and perfection in a building. Within the green and flower decked flowers which were erected in the churchyard were seated Dr. Ormrod and Sir Ralph Ashton, with such of their respective guests as had not already retired, including Richard and Nicholas Ashton, both of whom had returned from the Abbey, the former having been dismissed by Lady Ashton from further attendance from Alison, and the latter having concluded his discourse with Parson Dewhurst, who indeed accompanied him to the church and was now placed between the vicar and the rector of Middleton. From this gentle elevation the gay company on the green could be fully discerned. The tall maypole with its garlands and ribbons formed a pivot about which the throng never revolved, while stationary amidst the moving masses the bush cart reared on high its broad green back as if to resist the living waves constantly dashed against it. By and by a new kind of movement was perceptible and it soon became evident that a procession was being formed. Immediately afterwards the bush cart was put in motion and winded slowly along the narrow street leading to the church, preceded by the Morris dancers and the other May Day revellers, and followed by a great concourse of people shouting, dancing, and singing. On came the crowd, the jingling of bells, and the sound of music grew louder and louder, and the procession lost for a while behind some intervening habitations, though the men bestriding the bush cart could be discerned over their summit first suddenly into view, and the revellers entering the churchyard drew up on either side of the little path leading to the porch, while the bush cart coming up the next moment stopped at the gate. Then four young maidens dressed in white, having baskets in their hands advanced and scattered flowers along the path, after which ladders were reared against the sides of the bush cart, and the men descending from their exalted position bore the garlands to the church, preceded by the vicar and the two other divines, and followed by Robin Hood and his band, the Morris dancers, and a troop of little children singing a hymn. The next step was to unfasten the bundles of bushes of which the cart was composed, and this was very quickly and skillfully formed. The utmost care being taken of the trinkets and valuables with which it was ornamented, these were gathered together in baskets and conveyed to the vestry and there locked up. This done, the bundles of bushes were taken up by several old women who threw the aisles with them and placed such as had been tied up as mass in the pews. At the same time, two casts of ale set near the gate had given for the occasion by the vicar were broached and their forming contents freely distributed among the dancers and the first crowd. Very merry were they as may be supposed in consequence, but their mirth was happily kept with the due limits of glory. When the bush cart was well nigh unladen, Richard Ashton entered the church, and greatly pleased with the effect of the flower and the garlands with which the various views were decorated, said as much to the vicar, who smilingly replied that he would glad to find the approved practice, even though it might savour of superstition, and as the good doctor walked away being called forth, the young man almost unconsciously turned into the chapel on the north aisle. Here he stood for a few moments, gazing round the church, wrapped in pleasing meditation, in which many objects somewhat foreign to place and time passed through his mind, when chancing to look down, he saw a small funeral wreath of mingled you and Cyrus lying at his feet, and a slight tremor as for his grave as he found him standing on the ill omen grave of Abbot Hazel. Before he could ask himself by whom this sad garland had been so positive, Nicholas Ashton came over him, and with a look of great uneasiness cried, Come away instantly, you know where you were standing on the grave of the last Abbot of War, replied Richard Smiley. Have you forgotten the common saying, cried Boris, that Ashton who stands on that wicked grave shall die with him? Yeah, come away at once. It is too late, replied Richard. I've incurred the fate it could have been attached to you. And as my moving away will not observe me, so my having the fear have not incurred me in vain. But I have no fear. You have more courage than I possess, you don't think it I would not settle on that first stone for half of it. It's malign and good on our house to be a few too often. The first to experience the fatal destiny were Richard Ashton and John Bradley, the purchasers of the Abbey. Both met here together on the anniversary of the Abbey's execution, some 40 years after its burial. It is true, and when they were all pretty well stricken in years, and within that year, namely 1578, four died and were buried in the wall on the opposite side of the church. Not many days since then, their own enemy. The last instance was my poor brother Richard, who, being incredulous as you are, was his own great destiny, and stationed himself on the tomb during divine services. But he too died within the appointed time. He was bewitched to death, so at least it is firm. And Richard Ashton with a smile, I believe in one evil influence just as much.
it as in real life. It matters not how the destiny be accomplished or so it has to join the squire to earn the way. Heaven, she is you may say, said Richard, picking up the rap. Who think you can have placed this funeral garland on the abbot's grave? I cannot guess, cried Nicholas, staring at it in amazement. An enemy of ours, most likely. It is neither customary nor lawful in our Protestant country, so to ornament graves. Put it down, Dick. I shall not displace it, certainly, replied Richard, laying it down again. But I as little think it has been placed here by a hostile hand as I do that harm will ensure to me from standing here. To relieve your anxiety, however, I will come for he added, stepping into the aisle. Why should an enemy deposit a garland on the abbot's tomb, since it was by mere chance that it had met my eyes? Mere chance, cried Nicholas. Everything is mere chance with you, philosophers. There is more than chance in it. My mind misgives me strangely. That terrible old abbot Haslow is as troublesome to us in death as he was in during life to our predecessor, Richard Isterton. Not content with making his tombstone a weapon of destruction to us, he pays the abbey himself on occasional visits, and his appearance always tied some disaster to the family. I have never seen him myself, and trust I never shall, but other people have and have been nigh scared out of their senses by the apparition. Idle tales, the invention of overheated brains, rejoined Richard. Trust me, the abbot's rest will not be broken till the day when all shall rise from their tombs. Even if ever the dead supposing such a thing possible could be justified in injuring and affrighting the living, it might be in his case, since he mainly owed his destruction to our ancestors on the same principle it has been held that church lands are unlucky to their lay possessors, but see how this superstitious notion has been disproved in our own family to whom Worldly Abbey and its domains have brought wealth, power and worldly happiness. There is something in the notion nevertheless, replied Nicholas, and though our case may, I hope, continue an exception to the rule. Most grantees of ecclesiastical houses have found them a curse, and the time may come when the Abbey may prove so to our descendants, but without discussing the point there is one instance in which the malignant influence of the vindictive Abbot has uh, undoubtedly extended long after his death. You have heard, I suppose, that he pronounced a dreadful anathema upon the child of a man who had a reputation of being a wizard, and who afterwards acted as his executioner. I know not the whole particulars of the dark story, but I know that Haslow fixed a curse upon the child, declaring it should become a witch, and the mother of witches, and the prediction has been verified. Nine eighty years have flown by since then, and the imbecile lives a fearful and mischievous witch, and all her family are similar like they to all our witches. I never heard a story before, said Richard, some what thoughtfully, but I guess to whom you allude, mother, them died of Hendel Horace and her family. Precisely, rejoined Nicholas, they are a brood of witches. In that case, Alison Device must be a witch, cried Richard, and I think you will hardly venture upon such an assertion after what you have seen of her today. If she be a witch, I will. There were many such as fair and gentle, and see you not how easily the matter is explained. Give a dog an old name and hang him, a proverb with which you are familiar enough. So, with mother, them died, whether really, if the dog not, the abbot's curse on her, and the issue has been abroad, and hence she is made a witch, and the children are forced to inherit the infamous name. So it is with you too. It is said to be dangerous to our family, and dangerous, no doubt, it is to those who believe in the same. Which surely I do not. Prophecy works its own thing. The absurdity and injustice of yielding to the opinion of man as no wrong can have been done, the abbot I am over them by any more than by a and yet they are becoming more than the for their predecessors. I wish I do. And we are other of the generation who is looking for the sins of our fathers to turn to us. We are stricter against you, they don't only think I see the greater of your arguments to us. To be a leg of Irish, she is not the lack of which certain that there is no state. She may be only the more dangerous or a dead in her in the time of I will answer for all things in my life, but I think it is not even possible to look at her in the conscience. And so a few shall go from thousands of them. He has cast her a spell and told him to do that his first introduction of life. But to be serious, Alison, I have no beginning of exception to the rest of the family. But that only strengthens the rest of the world. Did you ever remark the strange thing that they all say the fair maid question and about the eyes, which is honestly unbelievable. This is very singular and I remember you have not noticed it before. The question of the question of the future is that the end died as Easily settled for Master Potts, a little London lawyer who goes with us. Pendle Forest tomorrow is about to have her arrested and examined for a magistrate. Indeed, exclaimed Richard, this must be prevented. Why so? exclaimed Nicholas in surprise. Because the prejudice existing against her is sure to convict and destroy her, replied Richard. A great age, affirmities, and poverty will be proofs against her. How can she or any old enfeebled creature like her, whose decrepitude and misery should more move compassion rather than excite fear? How can such a person defend herself against charges? 
easily made and impossible to refuse. I do not deny the possibility of witchcraft even in our own days, so I think it's a very unlikely occurrence, but I would determinately resist giving credit to any tales told by the superstitious vulgar, who naturally born cruelty have so many motives for avenging imaginary wrongs. It is placed in a dreadful weapon in their hands, of which they have cunning enough to know the use, but neither mercy nor justice enough to restrain them from using it. Better let one guilt person escape than many innocent perish. So many undefined charges have been brought against some of them that at last they have fixed a stigma on her name and made her an object of dread and suspicion. She is endowed with mysterious power, with which would have no effect if not believed in, and now must be burned because she is called a witch and is not in the vein enough to accept the title. There is something in a witch difficult to name, almost impossible to describe, said Nicholas, but you cannot be mistaken about her. By her general ill course of life, by repeated acts of mischief, and by threats followed by consequences menaced, she is become known. There is much mystery in the matter, not a myth of human knowledge entirely penetrated, but as we know from the scriptures that the sin of witchcraft did exist, and as we have no evidence that it has ceased, so it is fair to conclude that there may be practices of the dark events in our own days, and such I hold to be Mother Demdike and Mother Chatop's rival portentous in evil. They contend which shall do most mischief, but it must be admitted the former bears away the bell. If all the ill attributed to her were really caused by her machinations, this might be correct, replied Richard, but it only shows her to be more calumnious than the other. In a word, cousin Nicholas, I look upon them as two poor old creatures who persuaded their real to possess the supernatural power according to them by the vulgar. Strive to act up to their parts and are mainly assisted in doing so by the credulity and fears of their audience. Admitting the blind credulity of the must said Nicholas, and their proneness to discern the hand of the witch in the most trifling accidents, admitting also their readiness to accuse any old form of the demon to offend them of sorcery, I still believe that there are actual pastors of the black art who, for a return of power, have entered into a league with Satan, worship him, and attend his Sabbath and have her familiar in the shape of a cat or toy or more to obey their behests, and form themselves into various shapes as a hound, horse, or hare, raise storm, or wind, or hail, name cattle, be wicked, and slay human beings, and ride with her there will on broomsticks, but holding the contrary opinion, we will not, I have an aid as hearts in his quest of witches. I will not be joining witches. On the contrary, I will cause him to be nothing. Let us go forth and they quitted the church together. As they issued into the churchyard, they found the principal arbors occupied by the Morris dancers, Robin Hood and his troop, Dr. Ormrod and Sir Ralph, having retired to the vicarage house. Many merry groups were scattered about, talking, laughing, and singing. Two persons, seemingly objects of suspicion and alarm, and shunned by everyone who crossed their path, were advancing slowly towards the three crosses of holiness, which stood in a line not far from the church porch. They were women, one about five and twenty, very comely and habited in smart holidays tire but put on with considerable rustic entree, so as to display a very neat foot and ankle and with plenty of ribbons in a fine chest of hair. The other was a very different person, far advancing years, bent on the double, hoarsely stricken, her arms and limbs shaking, her head nodding, her chin wagging, her snowy locks hanging about her wrinkled visage, her brows and upper lip raw, and her eyes almost sightless, the people being cased with a thin white film, her dress of antiquated make and faded silk had been once deep red in colour, and her her old black hat was high crowned and broad brimmed. She partly aided herself in walking with her clutch handed stick and partly leaned upon her younger companion for sport. Why, there is one of the old women we have just seen speaking of Mother Chatos, said Richard, pointing them out, and with her and her granddaughter, pretty Nan Redfern. So it is, cried Nicholas. What makes the old hag there, I marvel, I will go question her. So saying, he strode quickly towards her. How now, Mother Chatos, he cried, what mischief is a loop? What makes the darkness loving owl abroad in the glare of day? What brings the grizzly? She will from her forest. Lair. Back to the den, old witch, art crazed, as well as blind and bold, say, That thou knowest not that this is a merry making and not the devil's sabbath. But to thy hut, I say, these sacred precincts are no place for thee. Who is it speaks to me? demanded the old hag, halting and fixing her glazed eyes upon him. One thou hast much injured, replied Nicholas. One into whose house thou hast brought quick wasting sickness and death by thy infernal arts. One thou hast good reason to fear for. Learn to thy confusion, thou damned and murderous witch, it is Nicholas, brother to thy victim, Richard. Ashton of Downham, who speaks to thee. I know none I have reason to fear, replied Mother Chatox, especially thee, Nicholas. Ashton, thy brother, was no victim of mine. Thou wert a gainer by his death, not I. Why should I slay him? I will tell thee why, old high cried Nicholas. He was inflamed by the beauty of thy granddaughter Nancy here, and it was to please Tom Redburn, her sweetheart then, but her spouse since that thou bewitched him to death. That 
reason will not avail thee, Nicholas, rejoined Mother Chattox with a derisive laugh. If I had any hand in his death, it was to serve the pleasure of thee, and that all men shall know if I am questioned on the subject. Aha, take me to the crosses, Nance. Thou shalt not escape thus, thou mutterous hag, cried Nicholas furiously. Nay, you let her go her way, said Richard, who had drawn near during the colloquy. No good will come of meddling with her. Who's that? asked Mother Chattox quickly. Master Richard Ashton of Middleton, whispered Nan Redfern. Another of these accursed Ashtons, cried Mother Chattox. A plague sees them. For he is well favoured and kindly, remarked her granddaughter. Well favoured or not kindly or cruel, I hear them all, cried Mother Chattox to the crosses, I say. But Nicholas placed himself in their path. Is it pray to advise them, or thy master, that thou wouldest go to the crosses? He asked. Out of my way, pestilent fool, cried I. Thou shalt not serve till I have had an answer, rejoined Nicholas. They say those are rude obelisks and not Christian crosses, and that the carvings upon them have a magical signification. The verse is a bird is written over with deadly curses, and the form in which they are traced as seventeen triangular or round indicate and rule their swift or slow effect. The second bears charm against diseases, storms, and lightning, and on the third is inscribed a verse which will render him who can read it rightly invisible to mortal view. Thou shouldest be learned in such a law, old hyphenness. Is it so? The hag chin lies fearfully, and her frame trembles with passion, but she thought not. Have you been in the church, old woman? Paused Richard. Hey, wherefore? She rejoined. Someone has laid a cypher tree on Abbot Hassel's grave. What did you mean? Asked. What hast thou found it? Cried I. It shall bring thee rare look like rare look. Now let thy not yet hide. Will it force thee grasping her withered arm? That hag uttered a scream of rage. Let me go on, Nicholas Ashton. She shrieked. Or thou shalt rule it. Hampstead ate. He shall ring and rack thy flesh and bones. Fever shall consume. The arc shall shady, shady bar. And Nicholas recoiled, appalled by her fearful gestures. Carry your malignity too far, old woman, said Richard severely. And thou darest tell me so, cried I. Set me before him, man, that I may curse him. She added, raising the palsy arm. Na, na, your curse over much already, grandmother. I not remember endeavouring to drag her away. But the old woman resisted, and teach him to cross my path. She mocking for her to the ass of shrill and jarring as the cry of the ghost girl. Handsome he is, it may be now, but he shall not be so long. The bloom shall be for his king. The fire be extinguished in his eyes. The swim depart from his lips. Sorrow shall be her portion. He looks him sorrow and shame. Horrible, exclaimed the vision, endeavouring to exclude voice the throne, which pierced his ears like some sharp instrument. Aha, you fear me now. By this and this the spell shall work, she had it, driving and throwing the air with a stick, then crossing it twice and finally scattering over in my hand full of ravens to snatch up and join me in a lot. Now leave me to the small rocks, and she added in a war tone. Her granddaughter complied with a glance of commiseration that Richard can remain. She cried at an ominous proceeding. Ah, uh, this must indeed be a wish, she cried, covering from the momentary shock. So you are convinced at last, enjoying me. Mm -hmm. I can take breath now, and all hell has it gone, and she shall not see me. Keep an eye upon her while I see if Simon far shot the needle be within the churchyard, and if so, he shall take her into city and lock her in the cage. With this, he ran towards the throng, shouting lustily for the beetle. Presently, a big burly fellow in a scarlet double lit place with gold, a black velvet cap trimmed with red ribbon. Yellow horns and shoes with great roses in them, and bearing a long silver head staff, answered the summons, and upon being told why his services were required, immediately roared out at the top of a stentorian voice, a witch lads, a witch always astir in an instant, Robin Hood and his merry men, with the Morris answers rushed out of their bowers, and the whole churchyard was in agitation, but the din once heard a loud voice of sand, far sharp, some shouting, a witch, a witch, for the chapel swear, where demanded several voices. Yonder, replied the other to the cross. A general movement was in that direction, the crowd being heard by the squire and beadle when they came, they found only Nan Redfern standing behind the olive. Where the devil is old, which on day right was with his men. I thought I saw her standing there with her granddaughter, replied which way true, I did not watch very closely. Search for her, search for her, cried the other. The neighbor behind the cross is not behind her, and one even more in any hall or dormer or on the other side of church or wall. I found the little empty of chapel, though all worthily examined for the old hag found on the question that whether a confusion was saved or was saved in her grandmother's quiet or based on conceivable. I began to think there was some truth in what strange legend of the rock said it was not exactly her life, and the old hag had managed to be 
see the multiverse on it and so I went to myself we have got the you know, which said yes so I just want to swash up and see all the nuts who we said you know, Nan Redfern is no which said which is Aston or Forest of Red now which is a which is why you know it is no more than any of those lasses around who said which is Lisa swash up I forbid him to do so so she has been examined by a shot and the next one with my spots of seeing the she way through the crowd so you have found the wish my master is like heard your shouts and hurry down as fast as I would just in time master middle is just in time he had it in time to sleep for it let me go sound in this out and have no no last that can go join the spar shot help save me master because you're riding up on the by this time the crowd gathered around yelling and he's a kid in their hands so I can think about the repair and the pieces of the good ass to conquer himself and he didn't even fall and I'll push back the floor more from it and remove her in front of the adding spar shot and I can let her be kept Say this to each other, Sir Ralph has time to examine it. Will that continue, Master? No, no, respond the devil with white to swim her, swim her. Quite right, my worthy friend, quite right, said Hot Primal. Let us make sure she is a witch. Second door, let us take her to the abbey. There can be no doubt as to her being a witch. My thoughts rejoin Nicholas and her whole grandmother, Mother Chatox, had just vanished from our side. Has Mother Chatox been here? cried Hot Sun in his round eyes to their widest extent. Not many minutes since, replied Nicholas. In fact, she may be here still for all time. No. Here, where cried Hotz looking around, you won't discover her for all your quickness, replied Nicholas. She has rendered herself invisible by reciting the magical verses inscribed on that cross. Indeed, exclaimed the attorney, closely examining the mysterious inscriptions. What strange uncouth characters! I can make neither head nor tail unless it be the devil's tale of them. At this moment, a whoop was raised by Jem Device, who, having taken his little sister home, had returned to the sports on the green and now formed part of the assemblage in the churchyard. Between the rival which Portinus, mother, Demdike and Chatox. It has already been said a deadly enmity existed and the feud was carried on with equal animosity by their descendants and though Jem himself came under the same suspicion as Nan Redfern that circumstances created no tie of interest between them but the contrary and he was the most active of her assailants he had set up the above mentioned cry from observing a large rat running along the side of the wall. There he goes with Jem the old witch I the shape of a rotten loo loo loo. Half the crowd started in pursuit of the animal and and twenty six were thrown at it, but a stone cast by Jem saved its progress and it was instantly dispatched. It did not change, however, as was expected by the credulous hands into an old woman, and they gave vent to their disappointment and rage in renewed threats against Nan Redfern. The dead rat was hurled at her by Jem, but missing its mark, it hit Master Potts on the head and nearly knocked him off the cross, upon which he had mounted to obtain a better view of the proceedings. Irritated by this circumstance as well as by the failure of the experiment, the little attorney jumped down and fell, kicking the unfortunate rat, after which his fury being somewhat appeased, he turned to Nance, who had sung for support against the pedestal, and said to her, If you will tell us what has become of the old witch your grandmother and undertake to bear witness against her, you shall be set free. I tell you no, man, replied Nance, dodgily. Put me to any trial you like, you shanna get a word from me. That remains to be seen, retorted Parts, but I apprehend we shall make you speak, and pretty plainly too, before we're done with you. You hear what this perverse and wrong-headed young witch declares, masters, he shouted again, clambering upon the cross. I have offered her liberty, on condition on disclosing to us the manner of her diabolical old relative's evasion and she rejects it. An angry roar followed mixed with cries from Jem Device of swim her, swim her. You had better tell them what you know, Nan, said Richard in a low tone, or I shall have difficulty in preserving you from their fury. I, Dorina, Master Richard, she replied, shaking her head and then she added firmly, I, winner, finding it unless to reason with her and fearing also that the infuriated crowd might attempt to put their threats into execution, Richard turned to his cousin Nicholas and said, We must get her away or violence will be done. She does not deserve your compassion, they replied Nicholas. She is only a few degrees better than the old hag who has escaped. Spear shot here tells me she is noted for her skill in modelling clay figures. Yeah, that who be replied the broad face beetle. He's unaccountable, clever of that sort. What a clay figure as big as a six month old fashioned it the likeness of farmer Wimbles, a Briarcliff lawn, and died last month was seen I a cottage and money others beside amongst them a model of your Lamented lover, Squire Wuckhart Ashton, of Down and Wooty, he grew up, and the art pierced through and fraught with pins and needles. You're lying and you're you, Simon, far shot, cried Nancy, regarding you furiously. If the head were off, Simon, I don't see how the likeness to my poor brother would well be recognised, said Nicholas with a half smile. But let her be put to some mild trial weighed against the church Bible. Be it so, replied Hot coming down. But if that fail, we must have recourse to stronger measures. Take notice that with all her fright, she is not being able to shed a tear, not a 
everything will be a clear way, clear way. I saw to move on a life all the pride and disdainful and having now completely recovered the natural audacity will soon break your spirit, young woman. I promise you, rejoined Pop. As soon as it was known what was about to occur, the whole crowd moved towards the church porch. Nan Redfern walking between Richard Asterton and Pedro, who kept hold of her arm, bent any attempt at rescue. And by the time they reached the appointed place, Ben Bagel and the baby time, who had been dispatched for the birds, appeared with an enormous pair of wooden scales while Samson Harrod were having been to the bulk in a game for the church Bible and immense volumes bound in black and great silver class come that's a good Bible that all events try part I am in this aspect and it looks like my honourable and severe Lord Jesus is Sir uh, Edward Hawke who were the chief of the Lord in England only that that great and good Hawke is generally bound in calf for half as you say large as the bullies it will scarcely weigh heavy enough to weigh down the which I climb up to it was with a smile we shall see the same by parts of Chelsea. By this time, the sales having been assisted to were put forth by Bagelay, the silver volume was placed on the one side, and the man sat down by the beaver on the other. The result of the experiment was precisely what might have been anticipated. The moment the young woman took her place in balance, it sank down to the ground whilst the other kicked the beam. I hope you are satisfied now, my parts cried Richard Aston. By your own trial, her uh, innocence is approved. Your pardon, Master Richard, this is Squire Nicholas's trial, not mine, replied Pops. I am for the ordeal of swimming. How say you, masters, shall we be content with this doubtful experiment? No, no, responded Jem Device, who acted as spokesman to the crowd. Swim her, swim her. I knew you would have it so, said Potts approvingly. Where is a fitting place for the trial? The Abbey Pool is not far off, replied Jem, or you can take her to the Cowder. The river by all means, nothing like a running stream, said Potts. Let's cords be procured to bind her. Run for em quickly, then, said Jem to Bagalay, who was very zealous in the cause. Oh, groaned Nance, again losing courage and glancing piteously at Richard. No outrage like this shall be perpetrated, cried the young man firmly. I call upon you, cousin Nicholas, to help me go into the church, he added, thrusting Nance backwards and presenting his sword at the breast of Jem Device, who attempted to follow her, and who retired muttering threats and curses. I will run the first man through the body who attempts to pass. As Nan Redburn made good her retreat and shut the church door after her, Master Parts, pale with rage, cried out to Richard, you have aided the escape of a desperate and notorious offender actually in custody, sir, and have rendered yourself liable to indictment for it. Sir, with consequences of fine and imprisonment, sir, heavy fine and long imprisonment, sir, do you mark me, Master Richard? I will answer the consequences of my act of those empowered question it, sir, replied Richard sternly. Well, sir, I have given you notice, rejoined parts you notice, we shall hear what Sir Ralph will say to the matter, and Master Roger Norwell, and you forgot me, good Master Potts, interrupted Nicholas, laughingly. I entirely disapprove of it, it is a most fragrant breach of duty. Nevertheless, I am glad all wrenches are off. She is safe within the church, said Potts, and I command Master Richard in the King's name to let us pass. Beedle, Swashart, Swashart, or whatever your confounded name, do your duty, Sira. Enter the church and bring forth the witch. Hey, Donna, Messer, Clyde, Simon, young Messer, the children of Slipmy, Weezen, Boss, Sue, and Zilda. Richard put an end to further altercation by stepping back and locking the door and taking out the key and putting it into his pocket. Okay, he's quite safe and cried with a smile at this come to the lawyer. Is there no other door? inquired Pops of Beedle in the wall door. Yeah, there be one on the other side, Clyde, Swashart. Both be locked, I reckon, maybe getting out that way. Quick, quick, unless he cried Pops. Just this must not be important in this shameful manner. While the great part of the crowd set off at Pops and the Beedle, which is Ashton anxious to know what had become of the and determined not to abandon them while any danger existed. He walked the church door and entered all the structure followed by Nicholas. On looking around, Nancy was nowhere to be seen. The buddy she answered to his ear calls and which had concluded she must have escaped. When all at once a loud explosion shout was heard without leaving the doubt that all had again fallen into the hands of the captain. The next moment, the sharp was seen in the LG and the system. And here in this fire, which was instantly the officer of the bridge and the smith of Asphalt and trying to found it back to the outside. So this is giving me now recollecting the key of the door is called the door of the ring and hurry back to it. Is that right? Very far, the door was locked. A broken voice was inclined to laugh at it for the then, but it seemed to look on the kitchen set in the tendons to be very and he followed it to the relatives who were from the area of the door to the that part of the churchyard when the shouts came. Only all the bridges to rest, however, was spent by an iron bar, and he called out loudly in the fear of the place through the wheel, and he made sure standing in the midst of the crowd and the door. Have a little patience with Master Richard's fly bar turning the wind and walking in the wind, and now charging down the mountain. Shall come out with them, and we are busy just now engaging in finding the fish, and you see all three are safely in the pocket, and I will send you each one of them when we start on the river. Oh, Master Richard, these lawyers are not being all the reasons to be a high shout, and this is 
so when I get out right here in my bar shot, I might need to make sure this is in glory by returning, but you know that it's not in here, it's just actually what K and the others were unable to aid me, and the death had it so important, and all were pretty much interested in what was so important, but not who the victory is in the game, so I'll be there, so it's answered in which is relatively late, even though it's got me to do so, I'm being set free by victory, and the drone probably seems to be the virgin, so I'll act side or on the way. They didn't go there with me at the back of the edifice when the flying figure was described by Jim Device who failed in his first attempt had run around that way and seen that he should catch her. He instantly dashed after her with all the fury of a woodhound and being possessed of remarkable activity speedily overtook her and heedless of her vets and entreaties secured her. Let go, Jim cried, and I went to the editor one of these days and there may be the choice be either the same straight as me. But seeing him in Oxford, she added my Grand Dame Shan Rakdai on solely like this. Jem replied by a course laugh of defiance and dragging her along the delivered her to Master Hots and the Beadle who were hurrying to the upper door of the church to end interruption. Cunning attorney, having ascertained that two Ashtons were inside and simply gave orders to have all those what and the instructions being promptly obeyed to the rest of the people themselves. The Cunning had the success of the strategy. Fair reprisal in the discipline of the assault shall find the more natural thing in royal life. Now the cause, the cause, it was at the sight of the bond which were the by by the way that Nancy would be described as aroused with his invitation to deal with the spirit of his prisoner now no longer apprehensive in his future from a spot which is no hurry to conclude the arrangement but rather for long then to exacerbate the physical consideration of the job with the unfortunate captain who didn't choose to stop the view of the scene and he was so vain in a short time before the form of mercy and he was by the two hands of the remorseless gem and the beaver and bent down by the main frame of the two strong men to the form of the great ones with hearts bound together on the wild valley wall, churchyard, trying to keep the streets and looking for the body with indignation at sight, which is the bold his exertion first through the window and fly to where the people who are now mentioned the powerful age of Tate combined with the energy of the inspiration were unavailing and people were raised almost mass frenzy, which would be held for the young woman born, shooting away by her captain. Nor was the good and the blessed in the second chance for the poor when he did it at the beginning of my heart, which was a deal for the rascally con.